Hey, what's going on, everybody? K1 GMM, Steve in Vermont. We're going to do this fast and furious. Um, as some of you may know, I don't know who. Uh, I did put up a spy server a little bit ago. So I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to tell you how to access it. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Uh, and this is a race to the finish. <laughs> I have a company coming shortly here, and uh, I want to be ready. So anyways, moving on. What is a spy server? A uh, spy server is basically an online way to listen to somebody else's station, receiver. Usually it involves a SDR dongle, some type of dongle, and you can ac access it much like a web SDR. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you the differences between the two. A web SDR is my personal preference. However, you gain more control through a spy server. In other words, picture running a dongle at your house and running software which gives you virtually full control over it as far as AGC, all kinds of noise reduction, blah, blah, blah. That's the one advantage to a spy server. However, one of the big drawbacks to the spy server is that you need a piece of proprietary software to run it, to listen to it anywhere in the world. Now this can be accessed through the internet anywhere in the world exactly like a web SDR. The difference is a web SDR you can just grab your cell phone and just go to the, the uh, online uh, web SDR. You don't need any software to run it. It's all done through the browser. Huge advantage to that. Uh, spy server not so. You'll need to install SDR Sharp to actually access the spy server. It's not hard but it is limited in the sense that you can't access it through like an Android phone or something like that, which is, in my opinion, a huge drawback. Uh, in other words, it's not completely portable. It's not portable accessed. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention about SDR Sharp, uh, typical ASPI maneuver. I do not like, now this is a personal preference, I do not like the new version of SDR Sharp, the newer version. So I'm going to show you where to get the older versions. I much prefer the older versions of SDR Sharp. It's probably because it's a familiar layout for me. Uh, it's more intuitive. Uh, I downloaded the new one and I hate it. Uh, I just, yuck. So anyways, um, let me pop over to the other screen after now that I've got through the description of what the spy server is, just think of a spy server as a web SDR, even though the web SDR is a proprietary system and it's accessed through the browser, it's accessed through the web, same as a web SDR, okay? It just uses a, a piece of software installed on your computer to access it. No browser required. Well, there is a browser required. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get over to the other screen. Uh, all right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to download SDR Sharp, right? And I'm going to put this link in the description, and these are the all the older versions. You can choose any of these. I would try and start with like, uh, well, what are we at, 2018, 19, maybe one from last year. Uh, I try to stick to the one, maybe this uh, 1727 would be good, but these are the older versions. Uh, you can go and try the newer version. I'm not saying don't run it, but but yeah, just, you know, I suppose if you get used to the newer version, the layout, um, you'll like it. But I've been running this for so long and they foobarred it, in my opinion, and I just, I don't like it. So uh, do what you want, but I will include this uh, link. So what you want to do is download it. It doesn't install. So when you download it, you'll have to unzip it. Let me get over here. Hang on. Okay, let me see if I can uh, find this. So, let's see. Okay. So when you download it, go to your download folder right here and right click and unzip, create a new folder, let's say on your desktop and unzip it to this folder. There is no install and this is what you're gonna see, okay? So 
Uh, this is the application. So when you're ready, you want to right click or left click. Some people may have to run as administrator. I don't know. I don't have to do that. Uh, when you open it, I'll show you what you're going to see. So this is what you're going to see. And let me open it fresh. Let me do a, a fresh open here. So hang on. Uh, I'm going to close it. And I'm going to reopen, relaunch it. So this is what's going to first pop up. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to go over to the website. And I will include a link for this as well. So go to the website, which is just type in spy server in, uh, in your browser. And it'll probably come up with this uh, airspy.com directory. And this is the it'll say spy server map. So this is a map of all the spy servers that are online. Anything in green is accessible. OK, um, so let's say you want to navigate, you know, the person's call sign. You can always plug it in up here in the search bar. Uh, if you wanted to access my spy server, you type in K1 GMM and I type in K1 and that's it right there. Uh, the maniac. <laughs> um, and it doesn't look like there's actually I'll click on this. You can click on it, right? And you'll notice it's got the green dot where the spy server is located. Uh, you can also, let me refresh. Okay, you can also expand the map, which I think is easier if you're surfing the spy servers. Uh, you can expand the map and you can choose one, right? So let's say I want this one, which I think is mine. Yes, it is. Uh, so let's say you want this spy server, right? So this right here, see this IP address? You want to left click this, copy to clipboard. So that's copied to clipboard. All right. You want to go back to your SDR sharp and you want to click on this drop down box and you'll see spy server right here. So you want to select that and this box right here is where you put that IP address in. So you can right click paste and hit connect. And what will happen and hit the play button and the spy server will pop up. Okay. Now this particular server uh, is default when it first launches at, it goes to the frequency 7.200, uh, 7, 7200. Um, so uh, all your controls are right here and you can basically click around on the pan adapter. Um, you're going to want, this is one annoying thing about this, it does not remember for some reason. You want to set this, the step size, to 100 hertz. Otherwise, you'll be scrolling forever. So, I've got some kind of weird interference going on. I think the coffee maker's on up, upstairs. So, to change frequency, you can just put your cursor up here at the top. Go up to 20 meters. And there's 20 meters. This is running on an NFED half wave uh, 80 through 10. And it actually loads up on two. So it's even though you won't be able to listen on uh, two meters because the dongle doesn't support it, um, you'll be able to listen to pretty much uh, 160 through 10. 160 is severely attenuated because it's not designed for 160, but 80 through 10, yes. Um, very good receive. So if you're an HF person, yeah, 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 man. There you go. Uh, so you can control the uh, zoom. Uh, you can slide the where you want to listen to. It's also good for AM broadcast. You know, you can find some uh, spy servers where you want to listen to AM broadcast in different parts of the world. Um, and you basically just click on it. Tell me to, tell me to put my snowshoes on. And you're going to have to change the freaking step size again. Uh, pain in the ass, air spy. <laughs> <laughs> Why it doesn't remember? I mean, come on, folks. Anyways, um, it's just a little annoying. There's just some annoying quirks with it, but but if you want, if you want a good, let me kick the noise reduction off. So we can just uh, plus amplifier. 
So, uh, yeah, so you can kind of jump around in here. Uh, let's check. Uh, I use it a lot here because you don't have to turn the HF rig on. Now, this particular spy server is running on a Raspberry Pi 3B plus uh, running uh, Linux. Now, here's the catch, okay? Because, and this is another problem with the spy server, so let me just mention this. There's another, one issue with the spy server which does bother me, but there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. I don't believe. Um, you can set the max number of clients that, be con that can be connected to this. So my particular server has a maximum of three clients with full control. However, the only person that has full control over the spy server is first come first serve it's the first person who made the connection to the spy server you can have two additional connections but the problem is you will not be able to change the band go out of the band to a different band until the first person who connected disconnects so let's say the first person connects and he's on, uh, of course, when the spy, this particular spy server launches, it'll default to 7200, 40 meter band. So let's say he moves to 20 meters. You'll notice when you log on to the spy server, uh, you're going to be locked down to 20 meters until he initiates the disconnection. And I have a uh, 30 minute maximum session duration. So, um, and they're all different. You can, that's just how mine is set up. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, pretty much it so what I'll do is I'll post the links uh, well let me run through a couple of these here uh, which are key um, you want to make sure your audio is set right here to the appropriate output sound card all right um, all your modes here uh, selectable remember if this thing lights up in the CW portion of any band it will automatically default to CW so you'll have to as in the case stateside here you will have to, let's say you're above 7200, we can operate on phone on 40 meters on 7200. So, but the problem is, is it will default to AM uh, automatically when it, when it lights up on uh, uh, 40 meters because the starting frequency is 7200. So if you want to listen to anything stateside, um, you know, as far as HF operators, uh, they're going to be all on lower sideband. So you're going to have to select, change it to lower sideband right here. Scroll down here, uh, and this is a nice feature, bandwidth. You can adjust your bandwidth. So if you're listening to ESSB, you can adjust that. You know, if you've got four kilohertz stations uh, operating or like some of the group on 3630, they run seven, eight kilohertz. You can adjust that here. Uh, here's the critical um, adjustment. This is what makes the magic happen in SDR. So if you go down to AGC, make sure use AGC is checked. Uh, let me start the spy server. I'll get a, a um, station here. So let's see. Let's go up to this one. Oh, that's a good one right there. That's pretty strong. Uh, and I'm going to have to wait. India Charlie 8 Hotel Radio uh, Golf. India Charlie 8 Hotel okay. Radio Golf. Is that a QSL? So we got some QSB in the band. So let me stop this right now uh, so you can understand what I'm saying. You can hear me. So the threshold, this is what makes uh, SDRs come to life. And this makes the listening experience incredibly pleasurable compared to a traditional super hat front end. So let's say you're listening to a station who's fairly strong, right? So I'm going to click here and I'm going to relight this up. You can change your AGC threshold and basically close this down so the front end is incredibly quiet and it's just basically audio coming through. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. Here we go. Thanks, Bob. Kilowatt zero up. 
in Alberta, which is in Canada, in about 538 uh, miles uh, okay, so of Montana. Boy, every time I go to do it, they stop talking. <laughs> I need a long-winded person here. Wonderful, and stay safe. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to close this down. You'll notice that the background noise drops. Okay, so he was just a station working another station. So let me jump over to a stronger station. The November 3 hotel there you station. Go. Come back, fill your call for me, sir. Okay, so I can probably close that down even more. So let's go to 15. Notice that the background noise is... November 3, Hotel Romeo Yankee. Good morning. Please copy Gene Golf Echo, November There's... Echo, and the County of St. Louis. That's that's the uh, that's about ten minus ten on the threshold. So you can actually increase the volume. Oh, then you kind of know what uh, where I'm at. I'm on top of the hill, um, about a mile north of where the, the big towers are. So uh, that gives you kind of an idea. All right, I'm out of here. I will catch you guys later. And have a super fine day. A bunch of fun stuff coming. I'm going to be working through a new uh, micro PC that is going into the Go Box. So that's going to be kind of cool. I uh, figured I'd just give you guys an introduction. I may have done a video on, on this maybe a year or two ago, and I can't remember, but I figured I'd put another one up with a little bit more detail. So 7-3, we'll catch you later. Have a great weekend and get in. I, I think there's some events. There's a Minnesota, Minnesota QSO party going on. And uh, anybody stateside here that would like to work that, uh, encourage you to get in there and support that, support that crew. Uh, make life very busy for them. We'll see you guys later, 7-3. Thanks for watching. K1GMM. See ya.